Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they have bloopers. Oh. Okay, and this is front. And this is back. This is no, so this is front. This is back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. Don't need to discuss. Enjoy. Share with them what you can. Last presentation for today, guys. Holy shit. Welcome guys, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before we begin our presentation here, we first would like to, you know, show our gratitude to, uh, you know, a few individuals and institutions who are able to provide us with the resources to be able to execute this presentation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if there's any smart person among us today who can identify that lovely face that we have on the screen right there. <laughs> any smart do you guys know who that is? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Exactly. That old, that's our lecturer, Mr. Ryan Salman, PhD. Now, we just want to say a, a big thank you to him for providing us with information on our motivation topic in order to be able to get our information needed and execute our presentation in the best way possible. Additionally to that, we have to also recognize our noble institution, Northwest College, for providing us with a projector. Come on, this is like luxury, you know? And giving us a space where we can, you know, share our thoughts with our audience. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with that said, I shall introduce my colleague right here, Himanshu, to tailor our presentation and provide us with the objectives. Go on, Himanshu. So now let's have a look over the objectives. So like what we are going to discuss in today's presentation. So we will start with motivation history. So we are going to introduce some of the relevant personalities with you guys. And moving further with that, we will discuss three current trends in the motivation where team member Diksha will come in. And moving further with that, we will give you a brief introduction like what Walmart is. And at the end, we will discuss like how Walmart uses motivation to gain a competitive advantage. Right. Now I would like to invite my team member Yuvain and he will take you guys in bag 19s. Be ready for that. Hi, thank you so much for my name, So right, yes guys. So uh, is there anyone, again, you know, in the crowd, any intelligent person, because you all look intelligent right now, I must say. Is there anyone can tell me what does motivation means to you? Anyone? Anyone? Hold on, let me ask of a prize, because you know, we've got to get the motivators up. <laughs> Come on, anyone? Anyone, what does motivation means to you? The forces that help you to do a work. Yeah. yeah. Come on, there go. Right, so we can work with that. That's yeah. something that we can work with. Right, here we go. Take, take a seat. What would they want? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, so as you said, the forces, right? It's the actions. It's, it's what guides our behavior. It's what helps us to, to, to keep our, those goal-oriented behavior going, right? It's what initiates those behavior. And if you look on my screen, you can see this guy. He's, he's going backward, but yet still he, cons he, he consistently push on to go further. He's persistent. Even though he's consistently going backward, he's still pushing forward. And that, my friends, is what motivation is. For example, let's use something that we can relate to. Let's be honest with our lecturer right now. Sir, show of hands, who, you know, sometimes, some days you're just feeling so tired and drained. You don't want to participate, but you know if you don't participate, you won't get an SLE grade. <laughs> show of hands who do that just for your SLE grade. Yeah, that's our motivator, right? Exactly. And that now, my friends, leads us into the evolution and history of motivation. Trust me, it was so hard. It was hard to compile so much history into just a small file. Very hard. I'm telling you, I wanted to cry, honestly. I was stressed. Nights and nights of no rest. But nonetheless, thanks to my intelligent teammates, we were able to come to a conclusion and something very well. So, tracing back to ancient times, we have group of numerous Greek psychologists who, you know, thought about why is it that humans behave the way they do, right? You know, it's one of them that stood out to me is this man, which is called Aristotle, he reminds me of my teammate, Himanshu, you know, very intelligent guy. 
you know, and he looks at two concepts related to, you know, human desires and goal. As you can see right here, we have appetitive desires alongside rational desires. Now, moving from that time, he basically paved the way for other explorations to be done. And right here, you know, big shout out to our lecturer, Mr. Ryan, for, for basically, you know, giving us the knowledge, you know, to feel confident in, in presenting on this guy that they called Abraham Maslow, a very famous guy. I'm sure we all know Abraham Maslow, correct? We all do, yeah? So, you know, he developed the hierarchy of needs where he stated that motivation is driven by needs. We have five needs that we must satisfy. Psychological, uh, belongingness, security, esteem, as well as self-actualization. He stated to us that the lower level needs must be satisfied before we can look to satisfy <coughs> other needs. Now, moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, we saw other theories came into play after Maslow's theory, such as the Herzberg's two-factor theory. He looked into motivators theory, which he states that motivators, they lead to job satisfaction. They believe, he believed that challenging work is what work that will be significant. You know, what do you really, seriously guys, what do you want to do at work? You know, something in your career field. I'm not talking about something that you do just to get money, but something that is in your career field and it has no meaning, it doesn't help society in any way. Would you be motivated to continue doing that work? Anyone, would you be motivated to continue to pursue that job that's not meaningful? Right? Yeah. Exactly. So this guy taught to himself that, okay, if you have, if we have meaningful work and challenging work, then yes, it will lead to job satisfaction. Now we also look into the hygiene factor, which he stated that these factors, they lead to job dissatisfaction. For example, imagine going into work, you know, you have very awful relationship with your employees. Would you be glad to go to work knowing that, you know, you and your employees are not on good terms? That feels very much uncomfortable. I have personal experience in that, end, and I tell you, I quit on the second week. Now, moving forward into the 21st century, we saw where a more diverse form of motivation, you know, were, were coming into place. These motivations were, were different just from the theories. You know, they were starting to be a much more broad aspect on the, you know, motivators. We look into the reward system, you know, this is where persons who would rather, you know, are the managers would see what is it that motivates these employees? And I won't go in this into detail as we do have my very intelligent teammate coming up very soon to explain more on these in very much detail. But well, these, my friends, were a few motivator factors that we saw came coming out in the 21st century. Oh, Ishka, come on over here. Come on, let people see your beautiful hair. Very eloquent. She, my audience. Letting us know how motivation evolved throughout centuries. No problem. There you go. Thank you. Ah, all right, take it away. Well. Well, current trends are the modern methods and strategies used by individuals and organizations to perform well and achieve their goals. Moving towards our first and foremost remote work. Will my audience show of hands who like the comfort of working from home? But I also do. I do. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So remote work gives flexibility, reducing stress, improving work-life balance, and of course, saving costs. It allows personalized workspace, which leads to job satisfaction, and of course, overall motivation. Moving towards the second current trend, it's autonomy. Well, let's all fly like him, a free Fly like a free bird, guys. A free bird. A free bird. A bird. <laughs> autonomy yeah, and motivation means giving, the, some, giving someone freedom to make choices and have control of what they do and how they do. It means they, they feel satisfied and motivated because they have a say in what they do. This is what autonomy is. The very last current trend for today is personalized approach. So personalized motivation means understanding that people are different. They like different things, which will make simpler and motivate for everybody. So now I would like to thank over, uh, hand over to Urain, and he will let us know what is Walmart and how they motivate their people. Alrighty, thank you so much for that lovely speech, Dishka. We truly appreciate it. And that's the motivation. Is. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, let me just. Yes. So as you can see, I've handled a uh, 
great display right here. I'm sure you guys will be intrigued. You know, that's, that's a very smart guy. Now, let me tell you something funny about that guy. That guy is Sam Walton. Do we, has anyone ever heard of Sam Walton? You have? Who is Sam Walton? He's the founder of Walmart. Ah, thank you, man. You're a very intelligent guy. You ask a lot of questions, and you're I very smart. Ah, uh, hey. <laughs> oh, so that's what's going to be my next question. So, hey, my... let's skip this part and application. We're done, and there's a class. Oh, oh. There's a class. Ah, okay. Oh, no no but, you, but you see, this guy, they, they, they said that he was an idiot. You know why? What is an idiot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, genius. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah, so sir, you see this guy named Sam Walton, they say he was an idiot. You know why? Let me tell you. He said that he was going to sell his products at a low price, but at a high quality. You know, and his friends were like, how are you going to sell high quality products at a low price? That just doesn't make sense. You're going to lose. You know, but guess what? Five years later, my friends, you know, he expanded up to 24 stores in Arkansas. And then, you know, in 10 more years later, he was the largest retailer in the United States after his friends stated that he was an idiot. Ah, I hope those friends regret that statement. No, let's look into how Walmart, you know, use their, their oh, let's see how they use motivation to gain that competitive advantage. And let me tell you something that I love and respect and very grateful that I got this group. Now, we are not presenting today any secondhand information. My group and I, ladies and gentlemen, we personally went to Walmart. That's right, we take things into our hand. We spoke with the, the store manager of Walmart to get information. How is it that you know, they apply motivation to get that competitive advantage? First thing that you said to me was inclusiveness. No to discrimination, everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome at Walmart. They're like a family. Everyone feels involved and such certainly boosts employee motivation and boosts the performance. Going down more, we have great benefits. Now, ladies and gentlemen, one that stood out to me is this right here, mental health counseling. There, we all know that you know, depression is real. People are sad, people want to talk to others, you know, but sometimes you just don't have anyone to speak with. And let me tell you something, counseling and therapy can be very expensive, but Walmart, my friends, they ensure that their employees are in a good state of mind by offering mental health counseling free of cost. Moving on, they have other good things such as, you know, ensuring that their employees are, you know, getting good skills, their skills are being built upon, you know, which can give them opportunities for promotion, you know, grow their selves, and of course, who doesn't love money? Higher salaries. All right, and then, you know, once more, as I told you guys earlier, we have our intelligent uh, teammate, Himanshu. Come on up, my guy. Quickly do the recommendation for us. All right. So let's have a look over the recommendations we have for Walmart. So as we all know, like Walmart, Walmart is doing really well. They are at a good pace, but we still have some recommendations for them. So let's start with the uh, first recommendation, employee recognition program. So we have a criticism against Walmart that me and my team have analyzed is that they can might benefit more from establishing more robust employee recognition program. So we recommend Walmart to bring regular recognition programs such as employee of the month by giving awards, by giving feedback, by which they can boost up the morale of their employees, by which they can do a really hard work for them, like which can further lead to incrementing sales and profit. And the other uh, recommendation we have is like flexible work arrangements. So nobody uh, wanna like to work in a tight schedule, right? So we recommend Walmart to bring flexible work hours for their employees, by which they can uh, boost the motivation of their employees and like it can further lead to high job satisfaction. Yeah. These recommendations they have already yeah, did there. We have a student oh, of but like we, are, we are just saying like to improve it a little bit. You need to raise yeah. your hand. No, no. Okay. Sir, I thought we are going. No, you're not going. Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, we understand that they did it. You know, we understand. That's why you see the word robust right here. Now, you might not know what the term robust means, but it means a more stronger, you know, a more stronger employer recognition program. Now, we understand, as you said, that they do have it in place, yeah. but they can do better. They can improve on it. And that's yeah. what our recommendation is, you know, is that they can improve on employee of the month awards. They can make it more ethical, more fair, because I'm sure you guys might feel unfair <coughs> that you work a lot, but then someone else get the award. So we are saying that, hey, Walmart, you know, they can do, they can do much more to enter it's a fair process between you know who gets employer more recognition understand and that's what we're just you know pretty much trying to say make it more robust make it more ethical you know make it something that will feel valued among the workers and you know due to interest of time can't have any more questions really love you guys for you know participating and paying attention and thank you so much and we all say thank you, thank you.